Hate to break it to you, but you can't turn off the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro. But here are some cool tricks you can use to avoid the magnetic timeline headaches. I'll show you how to stop messing up your video timing when you move or delete clips. Then I'll share my top eight tools for working in harmony with the magnetic timeline. And at the end, I'll reveal one keyboard shortcut I wish I knew when I started over a decade ago. Let's get down to business. The first way to do turn off the magnetic timeline is to use the gap clip method. That's where you put a gap clip by pressing Option W into the main timeline. And then you put your clips and your titles and everything else above that. Now you can move things around and you don't have that magnetic timeline snapping things into place. However, I don't recommend you use this method. The magnetic timeline is very powerful and can help you edit faster and more efficiently, so don't ignore it. Instead, I'll show you ways to work with the magnetic timeline so you don't get confused or lost or a crazy headache. One of the most important tools to use with the magnetic timeline is the position tool. You can access it by clicking this arrow and selecting position or pressing P to switch to the position tool. To go back to the selection tool, press A. You can also press and hold P and you'll see it switched. But when I let go, it goes back to the previous selected tool. With position tool selected, I can now move a clip around. Let's move this middle one. I'll click and drag it. You'll see it's leaving a gap clip behind there on the right hand side. Wherever I move this clip to, it will overwrite what's there. So it'll leave this gap clip and it will overwrite my third clip on the right when I let it go. All right, with the position tool activated, I'm gonna click and drag this clip up and look, I can move it over here and it leaves this gap clip here, which keeps my timing intact. And this is really powerful if I have some audio down there. In fact, let's add some audio. So what do we do with this gap clip? This is really handy if you don't have the footage yet and you need to add it later and you just need like a placeholder for it. But if we're ready to add it, I'm gonna switch back to my selection tool by pressing A and then I'm gonna drag and drop a clip on top of it until I get this plus side. Now it'll ask if I wanna replace it, if I wanna replace it from the start of the clip or the end of the clip, or if I wanna retime it to fit. Let's say I wanna replace it from the start and that will keep the timing here. If I just click replace, it will put the entire clip in. So now I've got my gap clip replaced. All right, with the position tool activated, I can also click and drag on an edit point and it will leave this gap clip here, but allow me to trim this clip and I can save this for adding something later. All right, here's something pretty cool that I just learned. All right, with the position tool activated, I can add clips to my timeline and it won't snap to the end here. Let's bring in this clip and it you'll see that it's making a gap clip. So wherever I put this file or this video clip, it creates a gap clip and puts the clip wherever I need it to be. Okay, I'll select my clip and with the position tool activated, I can move my playhead wherever I want and I'll press Q to attach that clip and it will create this gap. Or I can press W to insert it. It puts it in the timeline. Or I can press D and it will overwrite it wherever my playhead is. All right, so the position tool is one way to kind of turn off the magnetic timeline. To turn it back on, you'll go to the select tool. You can do that by clicking here and selecting select or pressing A to quickly go back. Now, when I click and drag a clip, the magnetic timeline is back on and things shift around. So another tool you can use to take advantage of the magnetic timeline is the trim tool. You can access it by clicking here and selecting trim or just by pressing T. You can also quickly activate it by pressing and holding T and then when you let go, it switches back to the select tool. All right, with the trim tool activated, if I go in between two edit points, I'll get this special icon and if I click and drag it, I can do what's called a roll edit. I can roll the edit point forward 
in time or backward in time. I can also do a slip edit. I'll click and drag on the clip and I can change the starting and end point of that clip. If I hold down Option while I do that, I can do what's called a slide edit. I can keep the in and out points of that clip and I can slide it around in my magnetic timeline and get it in the right spot. In just a second, I'm gonna show you that keyboard shortcut I wish I knew when I first started editing. But first, check out this trick for deleting a clip without messing up the timing of your project. So I have this clip right here and I've got a title attached to it and some audio to it, but I don't want it, I want it gone. If I select it and I press delete, it deletes the clip and anything attached to it and it messes up the timing of the video. Instead, hold down shift or function as you delete and it will delete the clip and replace it with a gap clip. and It'll keep everything attached to it and the timing intact. Here's another cool thing you can do. You can lift from the storyline. Select your clip and right click on it and select lift from storyline or press option command up arrow and you'll see that it moves our clip up above the timeline and it leaves a gap clip that we can replace later and it keeps our timing. Now I can move this clip around as an attached clip above my primary storyline. Another really handy shortcut for moving things around one frame at a time is the period and comma. If I select my clip, period moves it one frame to the right, comma moves it one frame to the left, and it's maintaining the timing of the video. If I hold shift while I do that, it moves it 10 frames at a time. If I activate the position tool while I nudge, you'll notice it creates a gap clip. And it overwrites whatever is there. See, now that clip is gone, replaced with a gap clip. Another way to work within the timeline is to use snapping to turn it on and off. Notice when I move my playhead that it snaps to the end here, or when I move a clip, it snaps into position. We can turn that off by clicking on this little button right here, or just by pressing N. So snapping is off and you'll notice my playhead doesn't snap to that edit point and I can move a clip around and it doesn't snap in position. To turn it back on, I just press N again and now snapping is back on and you'll see it snaps into position right here and my cursor snaps to the edit points. You can also turn this skimming on and off. Notice as I skim my playhead that I see what's happening in the viewer. I can turn that on and off right here. This is skimming button. I can click it off and now it doesn't skim. I have to move the main playhead in order to see it. To turn it back on, I just press S and now I'm skimming again. I can do the same for audio. This is audio skimming here. I can turn it on and now, as I skim, you can hear the audio playing. To turn it off, I just press Shift S and now I can skim without the audio playing. Another way to take advantage of the magnetic timeline is to learn how to adjust the appearance of it. I can click on this button right here and I can adjust the appearance of my timeline. I can zoom out, I can zoom in, I can change the display option to only show audio or just most audio and a little bit of the video or all video or I can select this and I just see little bands for the video and audio. I can also change the size of these with this slider here. Let's go back to a little bit of both and I can make it bigger. And I can also show and hide different information in the timeline. Okay, so this is the tip I wish I knew when I first started. I have this clip attached right here, this title. If I pull it up, you can see the connection point right there in the middle. Now, if I move this clip, the title goes with it. But what if I want the title to stay there? What do I do? No problem. Hold down the Grav key. It's right below the Escape key. So I'm going to hold that down and you'll see this special icon come up. Now, when I move this clip, the title stayed in position. Check it out. I'll do it one more time. Boom. I love it. So handy, so critical. I can also change where it's connected to the clip. Let's say I want it connected to this clip instead. 
I'll skim over my title where I want the new connection to happen. I'll hold down Option and Command and I'll click on the title and you'll see that the connection point changed. All right, so I have my clip connected here in the middle and I want to change the in and out points on this. So I'll press T and I'll scroll. But dang it, our title is moving. No problem. Just hold down the Grav key and the special icon comes up and now I can just move my clip around and the title stays exactly where I want it. Yes! All right, so that is how to turn off and on the magnetic timeline or more accurately, how to use the magnetic timeline to your advantage. Now that you're a magnetic timeline master, it's time to become a mask master. I made a video called How to Track a Mask in Final Cut Pro, and it's got some really good advanced techniques and tips in there. Check it out.